Hey, Ronnie, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Are you awake? I am now. Good. Yes. You ever get that feeling? You're laying in bed. Yes, Andy Rooney. <laughs> sleeping. And you know you have to get up at a certain time and that alarm's going to go off. Yeah. So instead, you get up before the alarm? Yep. Yeah, me too. What time were you up this morning? Uh, 5.22. 5.22. And what my time? alarm is set for 5.45. Okay. Yep. Uh, I was up at 4. My alarm is set for 4, but I was up before my alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. I, I hate that sound. Uh, do you use your phone as your alarm? I use my phone, but then I have a backup clock radio. Oh, yeah. I don't I'll Set for 4 anymore. minutes later. All right. Well, on today's show, the science. science behind why you always wake up right before your alarm clock goes off and that's next on Men Are So Smart. Go back to sleep now. Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your lips move. I had to be to it. <laughs> oh my God, we're stupid. Uh, hi, welcome to Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ryan. We're glad you're here today. <laughs> My eyes watering. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly everyone, and I mean everyone, has experienced that disorienting, uh, panicky feeling of waking up before your alarm clock. You have a small heart attack as you jump out of bed. Positive that you overslept again, which I never do. No. Only to realize your alarm won't go off for another five minutes, which is what happened to me this morning. That's not enough time to fall back to sleep, but too much time to consider getting out of bed. What gives? Ronnie, we need to talk about the science behind this. Yes. So, mm -hmm. you can thank your body's finely tuned internal clock for the early wake-up call, according to a study published in Science Magazine. It's all the courtesy of this little-known KDM5A gene. I hate that gene. Dubbed the alarm clock gene. Really? I don't, my People, son doesn't have that gene. He was a, born without that gene. A science? <laughs> yeah. He's a science man? <laughs> uh, and I think a lot of millennials were born without that gene. I think that, yeah. I think that happened. It skipped a generation. <laughs> How does this tiny gene have such a powerful effect? How does it? First... Uh -huh. You need to know a little bit about what makes your biological clock tick. Boy, that's not what I think of as a biological My clock. My biological <laughs> clock is not ticking in that direction anymore. Mine runs two minutes fast, consistently. <laughs> a protein called period, yes, I said it, per, P-E-R, rises in the morning, goes up through midday, signaling to your body it's time to be awake. It has nothing to do with the sun coming up, evidently. No. Okay. As the day wanes, levels of period drop. Falling per levels at night cause your biological system to slow. All of these, I'm sorry, your blood pressure drops, your heart rate slows, and your mental processes wind down. All of these signals tell your brain it's time to hit the sack. And the sun goes down. Right. Please, people. Yep. The alarm clock gene encodes a protein, J-A-R-I-D-1-A, that activates the PER biochemical circuit, wow, that maintains our sleep cycles. I'm exhausted after that, that paragraph. Was, that's a mouthful right I know, there. I know. Yep. And, and I only believe about a third of it. <laughs> but I read it anyway. Now, here's the part that we're all familiar with. You, you maintain a consistent sleep schedule. Right. Your circadian rhythm behaves accordingly, yeah. following a predictable daily pattern based on the rise and fall of your PER levels. Uh, your body gets so good at predicting when you wake up that your PER levels will start to rise, which releases hormones that tell your body to wake up slightly before your alarm clock jars you awake. Okay. So I work uh, day shift with the Sheriff's Department for decades. And usually either a 5 o'clock or a 6 o'clock start time in the morning. And I was never late. I never slept through my alarm clock. Uh, and usually I was awake slightly before my alarm clock went off. Mm -hmm. And it really is. Your body just gets into a rhythm. Even on my days off, I would still wake up at the regular time. Uh, sleeping in. Yeah. Well, Part of it was 
when you have dogs that are hungry, right? There is no snooze button on a hungry dog, no. as I always say. No, there isn't. The my my working dog would get. I'd sleep very close to the edge of the bed, and then I could feel her breath. Oh God. Her face would be right here when I opened my eyes. <laughs> like, oh, Dora, you're killing me. She was ready to eat. Yeah. So uh, it is. It's you just get into that rhythm. Um, it's kind of interesting. I've noticed lately since an update to my iPhone that in the evening time, Right around the time I'm getting ready to retire, and sometimes it's 9 o'clock, sometimes yep. it's 9.30, sometimes it's 10. But the point is, my phone starts making suggestions. Oh. Do you want to set your alarm for it? How does it know? How, how does it know? How do it know? I don't know how it know. It keeps the hot, hot, and the cold, cold. <laughs> like my coffee cup. How do it know? I don't know how it know. Uh, yeah, I, I, how does my phone know that? Uh, it, it knows everything about me. It knows when it wants to give me directions or the time it's going to take me to commute to work. Well, and then because I worked partially during the week and one day on the weekend for a while, there were times that I know it's going to take me, like on, if I'm working on a Saturday morning, right. it's not going to take me any time at all to get no to work. No traffic, like yeah. me coming to your house. Yeah, so early in the morning on a Saturday, there's nothing. But, And I typically started before the traffic pattern hit, so that was never really a big concern. Mm -hmm. So, All right, well, this is important not just for people who wake up a few minutes early, but those suffering from serious issues ranging from insomnia to Alzheimer's disease. So much of what it means to be healthy and youthful comes down to a good night's sleep, and that is true. It always has been. Uh, now that we've identified J-A-R-I-D-1-A in activating our daytime cycle, we have a whole new avenue to explore why some people's circadian rhythms are off and to perhaps find new ways to help them. Uh, now, this, this next paragraph talks about alarm clocks. Okay. Okay. Let's face it. They're a pretty brutal way to wake up. So it's worth it to use your body's natural waking process instead. Uh, best way to take advantage of this alarm clock gene is to go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. Easier said than done sometimes. Uh, if you must use an alarm clock, try a gentler natural light alarm clock for a smoother morning. Uh, that way you'll wake up slowly rather than jolting awake all at once like you would with a traditional alarm. And I've seen these. There's just no way that I would wake up with a light that gradually got brighter and brighter. No, that, that's never worked for me. We, uh, I did have a radio, a clock radio, mm -hmm. that the volume started out on alarm mode, started out very soft, and gradually got louder. But as soon as it went off, it makes like a little electronic click. Mm -hmm. I'm awake. Oh. So that's, I'm a fairly light sleeper. Yeah, you know. <laughs> There's an alarm. Is that a fly? That's annoying. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Shut that off. I got it off. <laughs> I was hoping it was going to be the other one. Bah, bah, oh yeah, that's the one I wake up to. Yeah, that's why I don't want to wake up to it and always get up ahead of time. You could throw all this science out the window, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, do you remember when you were a kid, and they used to have, well, they called them digital clocks, but they weren't truly digital. They, they had little like tabs that would fall down. And, and I have one of those. Still. Do you really? Yes. Oh my gosh, that's a classic. We don't use it, but it, I have one. I want to sell it. I used to um, I used to lay there at night and watch that thing just flip. Yep. <laughs> Counting the minutes till I had to be up. Yep. I you know what? I I can tell you this. I um when I sleep, I'm number one, I'm all over the bed. Yeah. Number two, you do not want to wake me up. Okay, noted. I can't promise what's going to happen if you wake me up out of a dead sleep. <laughs> uh, I once punched my dad right in the eye. Wow. And don't even remember it. 
Uh, and he had a black eye for about four days. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't real thrilled about that. No. <laughs> My wife, if she wants to wake me, she gets on the complete opposite side of the room and tries yelling my name or flipping the lights on and off. But it's a dangerous thing. Don't wake me up, okay? You guys don't have cold water at your house that you can <laughs> toss from across the room? That would be the last thing she ever did. <laughs> Nobody need that. How does how she do that? All right, so if you're falling asleep and waking up before your alarm clock goes off. Pretty normal. It is. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with you. There's no science as this person, Salk Institute's Sachandina Nanda da Panda. Panda. I've been to his express place. <laughs> How is that? It's good. It is the it really? orange chicken is really yeah, good. Yeah, it doesn't sound real traditionally Chinese though. Oh, to it, me. oh it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Alright. Well Panda says that there's a science behind this and there's a gene that it's a bunch of crap. That's what you get on this show, the truth. Yeah. Two old grumpy guys giving you the facts. It's usually because your mind, your brain, doesn't want to hear that alarm go off. You either wake up or you don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's... I, you know, I've been doing my radio show for going on 12 years now. And, I've over, and I have to be up really early for that. It's on 6.30 in the morning on the West Coast. I have to be up pretty early for that. But I can tell you there's only been one time in 12 years where I overslept. Ooh. What happened? I, I just slept through two alarms. Dang. Yeah. Uh, and that just never happens. Um, but at least you found your car keys all every other time. <laughs> except for couldn't once. find my car. <laughs> That's a whole other show, though, I think. All right. Uh, kind of a short show for you today. A little bit of science. Not really. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to uh, comment below, we, we will get back to you. Uh, yeah. We'll let you know how you feel. <laughs> we'll let you know how we're going to tell you how you feel. Yeah. That's, that's what, what we do. do here. Yeah. Comment below. We'll get back to you is what I meant to say. We appreciate each one of your comments and uh, it means the world to us. If you haven't already done so, we would really like to have you subscribe to our show. Um, it doesn't cost anything and it really means a lot to what we're doing here. It, it, it's not like it. Uh, validates us no. it's just that that's the goal of YouTube is to get subscribers to your channel so if you can help we appreciate it if you prefer not to I hope you have a good day I'm Luke Gallagher I'm Corvette Ronnie we'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart Hi welcome to Men Are So Smart you did squeeze the squeeze my hand <laughs> Look, look who stopped by. Wow. It's Ronnie. Hello there. Hi, Ronnie. Let me scooch Thanks up. for coming on today. Let me scooch up and get in. Nice to have you here. <sighs> yeah. You changed your shirt, too. I did. Yeah. Dang, we're really like. Uh, it's like, like a, a Jordan shirt. Big city here or something. Dang. God dang it. I don't buy Nike anymore, so, you know. Uh, this is unusual. Uh, that's a statement, a personal statement. Yeah, it is my, okay. my personal protest. Oh, we're rolling. That's right. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Um, 